Hey guys, and welcome back to the Simple Kai Guy channel. As with all of my vehicles, I like to nerd out and do as much research as possible. So in this video, we will talk about the common issues on the BMW R9T. Specifically, we will dive into the engine reliability, bike electronics, sensors, and other components. I will also discuss preventative maintenance, what to pay attention to, and my bike's repair history as well. If you have this bike, check out another video I have made on this bike where I talk about the hidden features and things you may not have known. So let's start with the air and oil cooled engine. Is it reliable? Do they overheat? And have any other major issues? Well, since this retro bike uses an almost retro engine, most of the issues have been pretty much ironed out by now. The R9T runs the BMW R1200 cam head engine, which is the same engine that's been used on the R1200 RT and R1200 GS from around 2010 to 2015. Based on the owner reports, a typical lifespan of this engine is at least 100,000 miles, and many examples have reached over 200,000 miles without any major engine work. Although not the same engine, BMW Boxer design has been evolving and been modernized for decades before it was ever put into R9T. From what I have read, they are low stressed, over-engineered, and well, extremely reliable. Of course, if you take care of them. Now, what is there to take care of on this engine? The main and most important thing to remember with this and many other BMWs is the oil. You have to check the oil often and make sure that it stays around 75% in that little window on the side of the bike. These bikes tend to burn oil for the first 10,000 miles, so it's recommended to check your oil every 500 miles. Some swear that it stops burning oil around 10,000 miles, and some say it still burns, just burns a little bit less after that. You can think of it as a break-in period, I guess. So I have around 8,000 miles to go before I break this five-year-old bike in. Since service is expensive on these, just like any other BMW, and you will have to top up the oil at some point, make sure you do not overfill it. Apparently, it's very easy to overfill, and when you do, you will blow your rear main seal in no time, and that's an expensive job. Some people think that since there is no coolant, the engine won't be as reliable and will overheat. Generally, it would be fairly difficult to get one of these uh, to overheat, but if you do live in the desert, it is possible. So you have to treat them as an air and oil cooled bikes, especially since there is no temperature gauge on the early models like this one I have here. Luckily, they are equipped with a thermal shut off, so at least the bike will not burn itself down. It will shut off, you know, as soon as it reaches a temperature that it's not safe to operate at. Starting 2017, they do have a temp gauge and a temp warning idiot light, but it's not always accurate and can be deceiving. Why is it deceiving? Well, the temperature is read at the cylinder, so somewhere in there, so it's much higher than anything you would ever see on a temp gauge on your car. On top of that, the max on the gauge is 140 C or 289 Fahrenheit, which isn't actually the temp where it overheats. So the, the engine can even be higher before it starts to overheat and the, the little idiot light comes on and before the engine can you know shut off itself from overheating. But luckily, it's not something that you can generally worry about. Just keep the bike moving and don't get stuck in a traffic jam where you sit for 30 plus minutes idling in a 100 plus degree heat. To summarize, this air-cooled boxer motor is thoroughly tried and tested unit and has been powering boxer range BMWs for years. So engine reliability is not really a concern on the BMW R9T. But of course, do service it regularly like any other BMW. We will talk about some preventative items we can do later in the video. Well guys, it's starting to rain, but I really want to finish and it's kind of fitting for this video. So next, let's talk about the electronics. As this is a retro-styled bike, the R90 isn't on the very leading edge of technology like many other BMW bikes. As a basic suspension, ABS and traction control as an option, and not a lot of gadgets in general. That's a good thing in my opinion, as there are way less things to go wrong with it, right? And it also means that it can be a keeper for many, many years to come. You're not going to have outdated technology on your bike. 
However, there is one issue that has been coming up in multiple forums and groups that I follow, the ABS sensor. It seems that a lot of people have been experiencing issues with the ABS sensor going bad, which of course disables your ABS and traction control, but it also causes the speedometer and the odometer to stop working. This is an issue that has been carried over from GS Crowd as it uses the same design. Some of the older models have also had problems with the wire loom to the headlight, uh, where the wires that run to the headlight somewhere in there, I'm not exactly sure where, uh, they move around as you're riding and turning the wheel and eventually fail. BMW has fixed this issue on the 2017 Plus model years with the plastic sheath that kind of goes over the wires and protects them. So it might be a good item to look into if you have an older bike like I do. I might make a video on it if it's something that I can do at home. Those closer with 100,000 miles should watch out for fuel pump issues and main seal failure. But those are not very common. Speaking of not very common, let's talk about other issues or concerns that people have been having with the bikes that don't necessarily have to do with the engine or the electronic system. One of the biggest complaints on the motorcycle has to be the quality of the seat and suspension. So this very thin seat right here, and of course that white suspension in, uh, in the back there as well. Some say that this suspension is basically unusable in the stock form, and for long distances, I kind of have to agree to a certain extent. I'm not a very long distance rider. The most I've done on the same time was about three hours on this bike and I did have to stretch a couple of times to prevent, you know, having a sore back. From what I've read, it's more pronounced with bigger riders and some choose to upgrade it. A very good quality, thicker seat can be had for around $500 and the same for a good rear shock as well. Most likely it's a worthy upgrade if you want to do long distance on this bike or you're a bigger uh, rider like I mentioned earlier. I also wanted to mention the transmission on this bike. Luckily it doesn't need to have its own section so that's nice. Even though it's a little agricultural in a way or the way it feels, the transmission is solid and there should be no issues uh, for the life of the bike. Uh, the only major worry would be the clutch starting to slip it becomes a major job as the engine has to be split in half but luckily the only reports that I've seen on this were with bikes that had well over 100,000 miles. The R90 range also has spoked wheels on some of the models just like this one and that means that you have tubes in your tires. This isn't necessarily an issue but you can't fix it with one of those kits from a store or anything like that. You have to take it to a shop to get the tube replace. Of course I'm not really sure I'd be comfortable riding on a kit fixed tire anyway but people have been complaining about it and that's why I mention it here. This also means you have to be really on top of checking air in your tires and making sure it's correct as you can cause problems with the valve stem on hard acceleration and with low air pressure. The bike also handles horribly with about 25 psi in the tires just from my personal experience. This bike can also go through rear brake spots pretty quickly if you tend to use the rear brake more than the superior front brakes that are over here. But that's more of a preventative maintenance item. Speaking of preventative maintenance, other than the regular oil changes, what else should you be looking out for on these bikes? Well, of course, you should be keeping up with the scheduled items in your manual, like the transmission oil, final drive oil, brake fluid flushes, and things like that. Some people go by the book and some choose to change their fluids every time they put a new rear tire on. Some also recommend lubricating their transmission shaft splines every 40,000 miles or so and getting the valve clearance checked at about 12,000 miles. Of course, if you store your bike over winter, there are a few extra things you wanna do. First of all, get yourself a nice battery tender or charger. It's much cheaper than replacing or buying and replacing the battery on one of these bikes, so it's definitely a good idea. To keep the tires from squaring off, some people overinflate them slightly, or ideally you would get a motorcycle stand and lift the wheels off the ground. It's also a good idea to fill the tank up with good fuel and add a fuel stabilizer on the last ride of the season. This way, no condensation builds up and she will fire up like nothing on the next spring ride. So what has been my experience like with the bike so far? Well, I've owned it for about, well, a full summer and put half of its 2,000 miles on it. And so far, I've been perfectly happy. Now, I've had zero issues with the bike. 
All I've had to do so far is put premium gas in it, ride it, and smile every time I open the garage door. However, I did receive a small packet of papers when I purchased the bike. So let's go ahead and take a look at those and see what we can find. All right, so let's take a look at the history of my bike specifically and what has happened to it before I purchased it. As you can see at 300 miles, they had to replace the battery. Uh, so the battery had to be replaced pretty early on. Not really sure why. Next, there's a few more important items. We have a few uh, bulletin items. So those are the recalls. As we can see, the bearing stud screw has been replaced. And then there was a right indicator that had to be replaced as well. And a complaint from the previous owner. It seems like there was an issue with the fork bottoming out. And I guess they adjusted something because I don't see any replacement parts on here. And then the next item is... Well, it's the battery again. So as you can see at 800 miles, it had its own, its second battery replaced. And reason for that is because the previous owner probably did not uh, put it on a tender over, uh, over winter. So definitely a good thing to do. Uh, they also fixed uh, the speed, uh, speedometer after replacing the battery. Uh, I think that's about it for all of the issues that this bike has had. So it's not a lot, but Definitely something to consider on a motorcycle that had slightly over a thousand miles when I purchased it. I have realized a couple of items for myself since purchasing this bike. What you see in the forums and the groups can be slightly misleading as this is a premium brand product and people have very high expectations. You just have to enjoy this bike for what it is, an awesome retro styled roadster. Of course, I'm also not afraid to work on my own vehicles, so it doesn't scare me away anyway well guys it's starting to get dark so i'm gonna finish this up but in conclusion there really shouldn't be any issues with the bmw r9t as it's mostly gadget free and the drivetrain and engine have been in the lineup for over a decade in some form or another most people just like myself have had a wonderful experience with the bike but i think it's good to look at the bad so that we can be prepared and on top of things i'm generally very happy that i have experienced the freedom of the open road the exhilaration of riding on the twisties and just cruising behind the bars of this on this gorgeous gorgeous bike every time i pull up to another motorcycle i get the same feeling i'm riding a beautiful machine a rolling piece of art that's meant to be ridden hard i'm willing to put up with any issues that it presents for this experience and i hope you feel the same way about yours if you are looking to buy one don't hesitate go for it and worst comes to worst you'll get to Get your hands dirty wrenching on a cool bike like this. On that note, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your comments down below with your thoughts. Like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.